Hello everyone, welcome back to the shop. So I am currently taking Mark Rober's online creative engineering class. And this video is the first of the three builds for that class. The requirements are food related and mechanical. And what I've decided on is a cookie launching crossbow. So if you're out with some friends, you wanna share some Oreos, but you're not in the same pod or household, so you have to stay socially distant. You can't both reach into the box. So I'm going to be designing a crossbow so that one person can take cookies without touching them, load them into the crossbow, and safely shoot them over to the other person. Now you might be thinking there's much simpler ways of doing this, like buying two things of cookies. But as a college student, I don't have a lot of funds available, and it sounds much too complicated uh, to buy a second thing of cookies. So I'm going to be designing and building a crossbow to shoot cookies from scratch. Much simpler, right? So off camera, I whipped up this quick little prototype to test out a few things. It looks pretty terrible, but it did serve its purpose. Uh, so we've got a box here with a slot for the string. I just whipped this up on the laser. Got an aluminum bow. And as you can see, there's a slot. Cookies will later load differently, but. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna make this box. Now you can see these ugly box uh, blocks here. That's just because what I'm going to do is build it out of this uh, three quarter inch poplar. I'll be able to stain and finish it nicely, but I was using quarter inch plywood on the laser cutter. So essentially what we have here, got the top and the bottom. Yes, they're very thick. I'll explain that in a second. And then I've got the second piece that I'm gonna cut right in half. So it'll be two pieces that'll be on the sides. So this piece needs a slot. I do have a router, but I can't find the right bits for it. So I'm just going to drill a bunch of holes and then file it. I need a line perfectly down the center. And this is like two and like an eighth ish inches wide and I don't want to have to divide that and figure it out because Imperial is annoying. So uh, here's a little trick for finding the center of a piece of wood. Uh, so I've drawn an X here. This is a 45 degree angle from the corner and where it crosses is the exact center on both sides and now I can just connect that and I have a line perfectly in the center of this piece of wood without having to measure anything. Well, my X's all I have to do is connect them and this ruler is not long enough. Hang on. All right. Here we go, this one This one should work. Line drawn perfectly down the center of this piece of wood. I got this set up in the drill press with a quarter inch drill bit. And I'm just gonna drill down the entire thing and jump cut through it, cause that would be really boring for y'all to watch. And a while later, got a bunch of holes. Now I just need to clean it up. And then once I've cleaned it up, I'll be able to cut this thing in half and have two identical sides. I've got the slot roughed out. I'll do more finishing on it later. Well, now comes the nerve wracking part. I gotta cut this in half. Well, as you can see, that is a really ugly cut. It's a cheap band saw. However, I still have perfectly flat sides on both sides. So I'm just gonna put those in and have the ugly side out. And I'm gonna be sanding the hell out of this thing anyway. Uh, that's why I'm using such thick wood. So I have a ton of room to shape it in the way I want. So it shouldn't be a problem, even though that is one of the worst cuts I've ever made. I'm gonna give you a close up here. What I'm about to glue. You can see it's gonna fit like that. And one Oreo slides right in. So this is like the barrel of the crossbow. I know crossbows don't usually have barrels, but this one does. I have now assembled the barrel with a slot. Uh, this will be sanded down massively later on to get a better shape. All right, so I got this kind of ugly looking box. As you can see now, an Oreo fits nicely in there. Goes right through. So now on this side, I'm gonna have a mag tube for the cookies to come down from the top and I'm gonna need to drill into the bottom for my trigger mechanism. So here's the basic design for my trigger mechanism. It's gonna be bigger, of course, but this little bit's gonna slide up. It's gonna go through here and hook onto the little sled and then you'll be able to pull it down and I'll have a spring under here to keep it pushed up. What I'm actually gonna do next is I'm gonna make the sled. It's gonna go in here. That's me made of acrylic. I'm gonna go cut it out in the laser. And once I have the sled, then I'll be able to position everything else. Here's my sled design that's blown up of course i uh, just sketched it up in autocad real quick so it's about two inches long and this curve roughly matches that of the cookie so it, it holds the cookie here and then this back circle here is where the string will interface with it and i'll put a groove in there so it can't slip out slap that in the laser and by the way link in the description you can get up to 500 dollars off one of these awesome machines and it helps out the channel These happen to be frosted acrylic, which doesn't really matter. They're gonna stack together, as you can see. They fit the Oreo profile very nicely. And by the way, Oreos are one-time use for testing purposes, so I have to eat this, and if I need another Oreo to test, I have to get another one. 
it's, it's a rule. What I have to do to this still is I'm gonna cut a notch or groove down here, which is gonna be where the trigger mechanism locks into it. And I'm gonna carve a groove down the back so the strain can set into it and won't jump out. And I'm also gonna put a metal rod coming out both sides that'll help me cock it back and will also stick out here and keep it from flying out with the cookie. That way this will push the cookie out, but it won't go out itself. And I'm gonna put the groove in for the trigger mechanism. So basically just drew a scratched a line with an X-Acto knife and I'm just gonna go in with my rotor tool and carve out a groove. I need to drill a hole down the side of this and I don't wanna just plunge in with the drill bit. So I have devised a new method. I've put a nail into my drill press and I'm going to heat it with a blowtorch and then use the drill press to plunge it down and I can get a very precise hole that is perfectly perpendicular to the pieces. Turn it on, make sure it's heating evenly. I'll very quickly take that off and line it up with my mark and plunge it in. And there we go. Not sure how well you can see that, but I now have a perfectly centered hole. Just put the bigger nail on the drill press, heating it up, and I'm gonna plunge it in a little deeper this time. I now have a perfect hole going straight through. If you ever need to drill precision holes in acrylic, a heated nail works perfectly. Okay, so come on. Yeah, so we got the kind of ugly slot for the trigger mechanism. We got the groove for the bowstring, and we've got the hole for the caulking mechanism and to also make sure this thing doesn't go flying out of the crossbow. Okay, after some work with the chisel, I now have a square hole where the trigger mechanism will pop up. Now it is time to work on the loading mechanism. I haven't talked much about this, but I'm gonna have a tube come up and they're gonna drop through a hole right here. Cookie tube is done. I'm gonna put another piece of wood on here uh, with the same hole just to give it a little more height. I'll glue this on once I have a chance to smooth out this surface so they bond well. But then after this is all glued together and finalized, I will slope everything and round out the edges. And I still have to add the grip. One problem with this design is that when it fires, a cookie might drop down. So I'm gonna put this plate of aluminum here, or those will stack on top, and I'll have a little lever that'll allow me to pull this back, drop one cookie in, and slide this in so the next one won't come down. I've cut the slot, I have polished a piece of aluminum. Not crazy polished, but enough. So that's gonna slide under there. And I've cut out these little T's out of acrylic on the laser cutter. It'll slide down in here. I'm gonna glue the, these two together and then this will pivot back and forth. So I just need to glue these together and attach it to that. So this mechanism took way longer to make than I was expecting. But you see, we got a little slider with the aluminum plate underneath. So the cookies go in here, pull back the slider. One drops down, slide the slider back in. It scoops under this cookie. We fire and then we load. I don't actually have much time to finish this uh, because it's part of Mark Rober's class. I need to have this done by midnight tomorrow. So I'm gonna get the handle glued up so I can let the glue set overnight. So I've set this up. I've got my trigger mechanism here and I need to have it come all the way up to the top here. I've started sketching a rough handle out. I'm gonna have this be at least two pieces thick and then I can sand it down to where I need it. All right, there's my rough handle shape. Got two pieces roughly cut out. You can see you got a handle here that kind of fits on there and it will be shaved down significantly and I'll be adding some pieces right there. So while all that wood is drying, I'm gonna start working on the bow. So what I learned from the prototype is I need two layers of aluminum to make a good spring. So I whipped up this design on the laser cutter and stuck it down on this piece of aluminum. I'm just gonna trace around it and cut it out with tin snips. So I've got it traced out and just to explain my basic design here, we've got the notch to hook the bowstring onto. I've got a hole right here. This is gonna be for rivets to rivet the two pieces together. And these six holes right here are for screws to put it onto the bow. And then here's the slot the cookie fires out of. Since I want these to match and I need it to look good, I'm going to rivet these together and then cut it out and finish it and get it down to size. Then I'll drill the rivets out, take them apart, polish them up, and then put them back together for the final time. I've got the two pieces riveted together and I found this tool that I had never actually used, but it's been sitting in a drawer in my shop and I finally have an air compressor capable of running it. So I roughed it out first with 10 snips. Now I'm gonna move on to this little guy. And then I'll move on to a hand file after that. I put it through the sandblaster just to test it out and I'm liking the finish. It's a lot easier than polishing it. Don't know if it's the right tool for the job, but I'm using E6000 because it's what I have. And I'm just gonna glue these two together, rivet the ends, 
Uh, put it through the sand blaster one more time and then the bow should be done. It's all clamped up. I'll put a rivets in it soon and bolt it all together. All right, so it's the next day. Got these parts all glued up and I need to make this an actual holdable shape. done tons of sanding it's as you can see on the back there's still a lot that needs to be done it's looking better uh, I have marked out the spot this is where the trigger mechanism comes up I whipped up a quick trigger design in AutoCAD hopefully it works I'll be able to do some fine tuning on it by hand after the fact there we go took about a minute to cut out Okay, so this trigger mechanism took several hours, much longer than I was expecting it to. It turned out to be not quite as simple as I thought for my mock-up. Uh, the problem with my mock-up is this trigger has a really long pole, and I, for some reason, didn't think about that. Here's the slot I've got. Got this piece of acrylic here that goes up and down, and then the trigger itself. So, right on this spot, I have this little spring. So I drop that spring in, which this sits on top of. It keeps it pushed up. It's a little hard to get it in place. There you go, you can see this thing springs up and down when the trigger is pulled. And just to demo, put the body together. I don't know if you can see in there. When I pull, when I pull the trigger, that little piece goes up and down. And here's the slider with the notch in it. So I drop that in, pull the trigger, it locks in place. Now this, it's not moving anywhere until I pull the trigger. And out it goes. It took a little shake, but once there's tension on it from the bowstring, that should go away. But anyway, that's the trigger mechanism done. All right, so I'm gonna screw this all together, including putting the little slider in. Uh, one other thing that's nice is the trigger design happened to work out that I don't need a pin in there. So there is no pin and it works perfectly. I put it together, as you can see, drop in a cookie and pull the trigger. Now I just need to clean up this joint here and this handle is held on by one screw there and one screw there i decided not to glue it just because if i ever need to repair this or the trigger mechanism i need to be able to take the handle off i have filled in these spots with some wood putty hopefully it doesn't look too bad but it is time to stain this thing i'm going to be using this red oak uh, i was planning on checkering the handles i may still do that later and just restain it uh, but I'm running out of time since this is for a class. But looking much better now. Working trigger, working slotty thing. All right, it is time to add the bow. The glue is not quite dry yet, so I'm going to leave some of the clamps on. All right, we have this on. I've also stuck in the slider. I put some nails on the slider. So it can help me cock it back and prevents this the little piston thing from popping out the end. The last thing to do is to string this. And I thought I was gonna use paracord, but I forgot to buy it. So instead I'm gonna be using this stuff. So the technique I've decided to do is I've taken a length of it, doubled it over, tied a slip knot on this side, put this on the bow, and then I'm gonna twist the string up and then put the other loop around the other side. That's on, tighten it down, pass the bow string through. Loop it through. There we go. Make sure this looks even. And I think we have a completed cookie crossbow. Let's give it a test fire. So I'm going to start with two cookies so I can test both mechanisms. All right, so we got that in. We're going to pull back the thing, cock it. You got a nice click. We're going to pull this back. There we go. We dropped one cookie in. Slider went in. I'll show close ups later. And here it goes. <laughs> that worked perfectly. This is the perfect, perfect way to deliver cookies in a pandemic. <laughs> so as you remember, this is for shooting cookies at someone socially distant so you don't contaminate them. So I've off camera made this bag tube that is fully sealed off. You got your Oreos here. You just slide it into the pack. Get some Oreos in your tube. And then you just slide it in. Now I have Oreos loaded up without touching them. To load it, simply cock it back. 
clicks into place. Slide this back. Oreo drops in. Give it a little shake. Slide this back in. Now it's ready to fire. So now we are a safe, socially distant distance. Ready to fire. <laughs> Sometimes it can be a little hard to catch. Now you might be wondering, what if I want a cookie? Simple, you just shoot it straight up. Three, two, one. <laughs> it's not the most effective thing, but it's fun. Three, two, one. And before I show you the slow-mo up-close shots of this thing firing, I also took videos like this of it shooting along a tape measure. That way I was able to calculate the muzzle velocity of this cookie crossbow. Turned out to be about 25 miles an hour. The fastest I saw was about 27 miles an hour, which also means that if you're hit by one of these cookies, you are hit by almost exactly one joule of energy. Now, onto the slow-mo shots. <laughs> pretty fun build, building the socially distanced cookie snacking crossbow. I haven't fully decided what to call it, but that will be what the title of this video is. So if you enjoyed this project and you want to see more, uh, please subscribe, like the video. Liking it helps me push it to more people, allows me to build bigger projects. Uh, if you want to see some of my previous videos, like this solar gazebo right here, that was a pretty fun build to do. I'll link that right there, it'll be up in the corner. I've got a lot more cool videos coming, they're just going to get better and better every year. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.